Should we expect a bounce back season from Eric Armstead in 2021? I'd say it's possible if Javon Kinlaw takes a big step, if they invest in a defensive end, whether that's Kerry Hyder bringing him back or drafting a guy in the first couple rounds, I think he needs to be the third or fourth best player on the line because everyone else is playing well. Not being the third or fourth best player on the line because he's playing so poorly and Deion Jordan is accidentally the third best player on the line. So they need to get Nick Bosa back. They need to get Kevin Givens situated and he needs to take another week Javon Kinlaw a rookie or Hyder and then if Armstead's that fourth guy I think he would bounce back to the five or six sack range not the team lead in sacks uh like he was last year but that yeah I see to me I still think he's a better pass rusher than Kinlaw I like Kinlaw and I think Kinlaw mm, no Armstead's still better than him he's still better than him Kinlaw just hasn't done enough as a pass rusher so to me entering next season assuming Bosa comes back which he should Armstead's still number two. Kinlaw's number three. Hyder may not be back. I think a lot depends on them getting a replacement for D Ford. If they can get a guy to come in and do what D Ford did, then Armstead should have a good year. If not, I think he's going to have another three sack season. I can't. He can't be the number two guy on your line. Can't. Do you think Hyder is the replacement for D Ford, or do you think they have to get another guy in addition to Hyder? I don't think they can afford Kerry Hyder, and so I don't know how they're going to replace D Ford. I really don't. I don't know. But I'm pessimistic. I don't really understand how numbers or math or money works. So, you know, I just say things try to upset Niner fans, basically. What do you think? I, I think Hyder might go wherever Kosarik. If Kosarik moves. Because, uh, I mean, his two best years of his career with Kosarik. So if Sala takes him along with him or if he stays, I think uh, Hyder might consider coming back on a, another one-year deal and repeating, and then he'd make a big contract. I, I still think Jacksonville is the team the Niners got to worry about with Salah because they have 80 million in cap space and he's he worked there. The owner knows him. They I, which and if you know Robert Salah, that means you like Robert Salah. I, I can't imagine someone knowing that guy and not liking him. He's so impressive. So I'm thinking Jacksonville, unless unless they decide they want an offensive coach, but they're going to fire an offensive coach. And oftentimes franchises go back and forth. I'd like to see Salah go to the Chargers. I don't know if they'd be interested, but I think the Chargers have some pieces on offense, and if they can just get a, a motivator, motivator and a good leader, I think they would take it from being one of the worst teams in the NFL to being in the upper half. And I mean, we I, I assume you like Herbert. I assume you like what you see from him, and they got some good receivers. They got a lot of pieces. He would have another Bosa on his team. Yeah. yeah. No, you could argue that the Chargers are a better uh, destination than Jacksonville because yeah. of Herbert. Now, if Jacksonville gets that number one pick somehow, which doesn't look likely because Sam Darnold and, and God, the Jets, uh, but if they do, then it's, then I then I would, I mean, Trevor Lawrence plus the $80 million in cap space. Uh, if you don't get the number one pick, then you're like, who, who do I take? Do I take Justin Peel? Do I take, you know, it's, it's a tough one. So yeah, maybe, maybe the Chargers. <laughs>